So hey friends, um, it's Wayne Polson here. Just checking in with you. It's been a while since I've uh, talked about this topic before, but I did put a video out on the RV Custom Products Battery Control Center that um, I have installed in my 2007 Four Winds Hurricane uh, Class A motorhome. Um, I'll put a link to that video down in the description, but I'll also probably Put a thumbnail at the end of the video uh, so that you can just click on that if you want to watch it. That's a long video, has a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on with it, but it does talk about the theory of operation behind the battery control center. There are a lot of people who have a lot of questions about it, so if you're curious and you want to know more about how that system works, check out that video. I'm going to go into that a little bit more detail today because today mine malfunctioned. My coach battery is no longer charging from the alternator when I'm driving down the road um, and we have isolated it down to the battery control center and I'll explain all of that in further detail in a little bit so um, that's what this video is about I'm gonna troubleshoot this problem we're gonna fix the problem and I'm gonna show you how it's done alright check back alright so this is the custom RV products or the RV custom products um, battery control center. It's kind of an ominous looking box on the inside when you remove the cover. It looks like there's an awful lot going on here but there really isn't that much. 90% or 95% okay let's go with 90% of this box is just connectors and fuses. That's pretty much what you're seeing here. Fuses, connectors, fuses, connectors all over the place. The real heart of this particular product is in this upper left hand corner right here. This is the interconnect relay driver circuit. Um, it sounds like it would be a little circuit board all by itself but it's actually designed right into this main circuit board here. This is where the logic resides for deciding how the coach battery and the chassis battery are charged as a set. So we're gonna we're gonna get into that discussion here in just a second. So let me describe my problem. I can charge my coach battery from the generator. I can charge my coach battery from the shore power converter that converts 120 volts to 12 volts. My, my coach battery will stay charged as long as I have one of those two sources available. But if I'm driving down the road and I, so I obviously won't have shore power and I won't have my generator running, my coach battery will slowly die and it'll drain. And so periodically what we found out we had to do on a trip back from Wisconsin recently was uh, every couple of hours turn the generator on while we were driving so that the coach battery could, could continue to charge. And for those of you who aren't totally uh, savvy, I'm, I'm not a savvy camper, uh, but the coach battery is what normally supplies power to like the lights inside the camper. Um, you know, the, the, the 12 volt devices that exist inside the camper. Uh, usually is supplied by the coach battery. The chassis battery is strictly for starting the engine and keeping the engine running while you're going down the road. And of course the alternator plays into that as well. What should be happening though is while you're driving down the road the alternator should not only be charging the chassis battery but it should also charge the coach battery. And in this particular case the coach battery is not seeing that charge from the alternator. So let me explain what's going on with this circuit. All right, so from the left side, the chassis battery, which controls the engine, is connected here to this bottom lug. This lug here is the coach battery. And this is what supplies power to the coach or to the, the house part, the living quarters, let's say, of the, of the RV. There's a ground connection here. That is just what that is. It's a ground connection that goes to the chassis of the vehicle. And then the house panel uh, converter gets connected in here. And then over here is the chassis switched connection. What this is is when you apply power or when you press the top of the chassis disconnect switch inside the coach, um, there is a contactor in here that closes that switches the battery connection over to this terminal here providing a switched chassis battery connection all 12 volts okay these are two 12 volt sources down here so ideally the way this circuit would work is 
let's just say that both batteries are starting off at about 12.6 volts. What will happen is when you start driving down the road and you have, and you keep in mind, if you're driving down the road, you have to have the chassis battery disconnect switch inside the cabin turned on so that you can start the vehicle. So with that turned on and you're, you've got your engine running, the alternator now is delivering 12 volts to the chassis battery over here, regardless of the position of the coach battery disconnect switch. It doesn't matter if the coach battery is connected uh, with the disconnect switch or not. You must have at least the chassis battery uh, connection switched on when you're driving down the road, otherwise you can't drive your vehicle. I'll tell you, there's a modification to these boards that came out. I forget what date that was, what year that was. But it used to be that if you were driving down the road and somebody accidentally turned off the chassis disconnect, you would actually lose engine power and your, your RV would come to a sudden, uh, sudden halt. Uh, not a good thing. So they put a modification in here. It's, a call, it's called an inter ignition interlock. It keeps you from being able to turn, to turn the chassis battery disconnect switch off while you're driving under power. So while you're driving, this will always be hot right here, okay? So if that's the case, what happens then, as you're driving down the road, the alternator is charging your chassis battery continually. The chassis battery will eventually charge to a, a value of about 13.2 volts. When it reaches 13.2 volts, the system, is going, the system designers decided, hey, when, it's, when, when one battery is at 13.2 volts, why don't, we, why don't we share that voltage with the other battery? So the circuit engages the interconnect relay. The interconnect relay clunks and it shorts internally, it shorts the two battery terminals together and now both batteries are charging in tandem or in parallel. And that will continue um, as long as you're traveling down the road. That will stay engaged. And when you come to a stop and you shut off the engine, the chassis battery is no longer getting a charge from the alternator. Now you're basically running your your living quarters, lights, and things like that. All your 12 volt accessories are being run off of both batteries because they're still in parallel. This, is, this, this relay will remain latched as long as the voltage is, uh, has made it to that 13.2 uh, volt level. As the voltage on, the, on the both batteries, as, as the voltage drains simultaneously down to 12.6 volts, when it reaches 12.6 volts, the interconnect relay driver will say, okay, that's enough drainage from both batteries. We want to preserve the chassis battery in case we need to start the RV, so let's disconnect the two batteries. And so the interconnect relay disengages. Now you're running your house solely off of the coach battery. The chassis battery is left alone to remain charged for when you need the RV to run. So at that point, this battery will continue to drain unless, of course, you start your generator um, or uh, connect to shore power and those two sources will then keep the coach battery charged to a full level all the time. Now if the coach battery is getting a charge from the shore power line or from the converter, I mean uh, from the uh, generator, then eventually this battery is going to charge back up to 13.2 volts. When it does, guess what? The interconnect re relay driver says, gee, we got a lot of voltage here on this uh, on this coach battery, why don't we share some of that with the chassis? So it engages, shorts the two batteries together, and now the chassis battery gets a chance to charge up to 13.2 as well. So it's a great world when this happens, okay? Both batteries stay maintained at a nice level all the time. Okay, so then that's as long as you are on shore power or running off generator. Okay, but as soon as as, as soon as you boondock, I mean, you have no electric, no shore power, and you have no generator, and you're running just off of the coach battery, when that ba battery sinks, or when that voltage sinks back down to 12.6, disconnect takes place to preserve the chassis battery, and you're back to where you were before. You better start your generator to get this running back up again. So anyway, that's a, that's a lengthy discussion about how the interconnect relay driver works normally. In my case, it's not doing that. In my case, when you're on the alternator, you can actually hear this thing chunking, like you can hear clunk, like it's making. It's the interconnect relay making when the chassis battery gets up to 13.2 volts. 
it engages and you're thinking man everything's great in the world but yet when you look at the battery level the voltage level on the chassis or a coach battery it's still draining and still draining and it's not really seeing the uh, uh, the alternator or the chassis battery both and we're going to show you why here in a second all right so i want you to see my test setup here this is uh, the way i'm going to simulate the two batteries I have a dual power supply here. I know a lot of you don't have the luxury of having one of those. Um, if you don't, it's going to make this troubleshooting a little bit more difficult because you have to find a way to provide um, a source voltage to both the coach and chassis battery lugs and be able to vary the voltage level. You might need um, a, a voltage divider network. You might need a resistor decade box or something along those lines. Uh, either way, you're going to have to have something that you don't find um, in your typical garage. Okay, so but I have a dual power supply. I keep this. It's handy for many different things. It's it, it's a universal good thing to have on your bench, and you don't have to pay a fortune for them. But this one does have two outputs, and I've got one labeled chassis, one labeled coach. I have. I'm going to take these test leads out for now. I and th this is the chassis battery output side this is the coach battery output side here and I have as you can see on the negative terminals I have them bust together with a bus wire now um, that is only so that I can provide a common ground for both batteries just the way it is in your RV on your RV both batteries have a common connection to the chassis somewhere okay so this simulates that same situation. The chassis battery red wire is going to be going to the chassis lug on the box. The coach battery red wire is going to go to the coach terminal on the box. And there's going to be one common black wire right here that is going to go to the ground lug on the black box. And for this test, what I'll be doing is I'll be setting this particular power supply. I can set it so that these power supplies are in parallel by flipping these two switches over in that direction and it, it takes on the function of the bottom line which is which says parallel there so I'll have a parallel output both of these voltages will track whenever I uh, adjust the the master voltage here the master voltage and the slave voltage is labeled here accordingly and I can turn this on and just show that to you nothing shorted here so you can see when I adjust the master voltage both coach and battery follow one another and that's going to be a lot easier for uh, demonstrating how this system works I could run them independently so that this one is independent of this one but it makes it a little bit more difficult to run the tests that we have to run here so I'm going to run these in parallel okay so that's that for the meantime I'm going to turn that off all right let's show how these are connected here I'm going to route these wires around the back side of the box. I'm going to find the chassis wire right here. This is the chassis wire. I'm going to put it onto the chassis terminal. And this one is, of course, the coach battery wire. I'm going to put it around the coach battery terminal there make sure it's good and tight you don't want your test to fail because of a poor connection then we're going to put the ground wire for the common ground right there so these are just finger tight just make sure they're the wires are making a good contact there all right so we're ready to begin our test Okay, um, I do have a schematic diagram of this. Don't be intimidated by this. Again, you, all you see on here, connectors, fuses, 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 connectors, fuse. And then you, you've got the important things here. This is the battery chassis connection, the coach battery connection, house panel connection, uh, the ignition relay wire. It's this uh, switched connection right here. 
uh, it's just labeled differently. The switch connection is this manufacturer's chassis ignition relay, so that's where the 12 volts goes to the ignition relay so that you can start the vehicle. And you have to have the chassis battery contactor or disconnect switch turned on for uh, to get voltage at this point. All right, but so don't be intimidated by this. So the interconnect relay driver is just really represented by this little box. It doesn't show any discrete components, but yet when you look down at this little square here, uh, there are probably 30 different components that make up the circuit here. Okay. Um, so this is just a, a block diagram of, of that box. Let me just explain something here for you. Okay. So if you look at the chassis battery connection and the coach battery connection, they both have a connection here through an open uh, contact and that's the interconnect relay contact it's normally open so these batteries are actually independent this relay contactor can close and make these batteries operate in parallel so that's what the interconnect relay driver does is it controls the operation of this relay which opens and closes the switch at specific times as you notice the inputs to the circuit they are basically uh, as far as I can see, just really three. I'm not really sure what the test point, the TP um, um, node does, whether it's an input, an output. I'm not really sure. I haven't figured that part out yet. But I can tell you that uh, it does have a ground connection. It has to have that. And then it has a power connection. This power connection is, if you trace this backwards, it comes to two diodes. Now, these diodes are summing diodes. They add in uh, the voltage that's applied on the back side of this diode and they add the voltage supplied on the back side of this diode to give a common uh, voltage here. It's normally considered like an OR gate because either this or this will give you that. So, um, so if you have 12 volts here or 12 volts here, you will have 12 volts here. And that's the principle behind that. The 12 volt supplies for this diode and this diode come from this contactor right here, if you notice, this contactor here is the chassis disconnect contactor. And this is a this contactor, by the way, is a latching relay or a latching contactor, meaning that once you energize it in one direction, it stays in that direction whether you remove power or not until you hit until you apply power in the opposite polarity to it, then it reverses direction. So in other words, when you turn the chassis disconnect solenoid on, this contact stays closed forever until you turn it off. And when you turn this off, in order to turn this off, you have to reverse the voltage across it. So there always has to be voltage to make this disconnect solenoid change its position. All right, so if you're in the connected position, if you follow this back, this goes right on back to the chassis battery. So you have the chassis battery disconnect turned on, you have 12 volts at this diode. Okay, well, let's look at the other source. This diode here comes down and goes to this coach disconnect solenoid. Same kind of latching solenoid, latching relay, latching contactor, whatever you want to call it. Um, and and it, here's, here are these connections, by the way, to, the, to these um, solenoids. And you can see that uh, they, they go to the coach disconnect and chassis disconnect switches back inside the cabin. That's what controls these things. Again, you apply a voltage in one direction to close these contacts. You flip the voltage to the other direction to open these contacts. So, and if you keep going past this switch, you'll see that it comes out here to the coach battery. So the coach battery path goes through the uh, coach disconnect solenoid to this diode. So this circuit needs to have either the coach, the coach battery connected or the chassis battery connected. Either or will supply power to the interconnect relay driver. So as long as you have power and ground, this circuit is awake and waiting for action. There's another connection here. This is an input as well. This normally has 12 volts on it if you measure it with a meter. It's the auxiliary start command. This comes all the way back up to your dashboard and it goes to the auxiliary start switch. This auxiliary start switch is, is switch is used to assist the chassis battery when you're trying to start your engine in case the chassis battery for some reason has drained. You can use the coach battery to assist the chassis battery. So when you flip the auxiliary start switch to the auxiliary start position, you apply a ground here. Applying a ground here tells this interconnect relay driver, don't waste any time, go ahead and immediately close this contact so both batteries are latched in parallel to start the vehicle.
and then after a period of time when you release this switch, uh, I think it's my, maybe 15 seconds or so, this interconnect relay driver will release this connection. So you need to push the button, get your starting underway, and then um, the circuit will open up. So you can also simulate that right from uh, right from inside the box. If you go to pin one of P1, here, this is P1. This pin right here is that connection. If you take a wire and stick it in here and take the other wire and ground it to the ground lug over here um, or this ground lug um, on the outside of the box, if you put a ground here and a ground here, you are in effect pressing the auxiliary start switch and you'll hear the transfer solenoid, um, the interconnect solenoid engage. And you can see the interconnect solenoids laying back here. There's a bus bar connected to the uh, coach battery connection and then there's a bus bar back here connected to the chassis battery connection. We're going to look at this in detail further. All right, so back to the schematic. Now the real magic of how this works. So either the chassis battery is supplying voltage or the coach battery is supplying voltage or they both are. In either case right here this interconnect relay driver is is monitoring the voltage if the voltage sensed at this point right here is 12.2 volts, this relay will be open because both batteries now at our, are at a low level. We want to charge one or the other battery before we tie them together. So when you let's just consider the case where you're running down the road under engine power. The chassis battery now you know has got to be turned on, so it is on. You may or may not have the coach battery turned on. It doesn't matter because you have 12 volts coming from the chassis battery. The chassis battery is getting charged by the alternator. So the chassis battery starts off at 12.2 volts, and as you're driving down the road, it charges. And this point is monitoring that charge until it reaches 13.6 volts, or I'm sorry, 13.2 um, volts. When this reaches 13.2 volts, this interconnect relay driver will wait for 15 seconds and then it'll close this relay contact. At that point the alternator is in effect connected to the coach battery and the chassis battery at the same time so now the coach battery begins to charge. And this charge pattern will continue indefinitely until both batteries reach the same level of charge. It might be 13.2 or higher. It'll, it'll continue to charge and it'll just sit there at that voltage for the, uh, until something changes. So now let's, so you've driven, you've made it out to Arizona or wherever, wherever it is you're going, Wisconsin in our case, um, and we shut the engine off. There's no longer a supply voltage here. There's no longer any current coming from the alternator here. So this battery and this battery are still connected in parallel by the interconnect relay driver. But you, now you mess around in the house, you turn the lights on, you turn on some other 12 volt things. Both of these batteries begin to discharge at the same time. And when that happens, eventually, this summing node here will drop down to 12.6 volts. When this reaches 12.6 volts, uh, there will be another 15 second delay after detecting the 12.6 volts and this relay will release. And now both batteries are independent. And the purpose of that is to preserve the charge on the chassis battery at 12.6 volts and no lower. Now you're running solely on the coach battery. So at this point, this coach battery will continue to drain. There's nothing charging it unless you plug it, your RV into shore power or start your generator. At that point, this battery begins to charge. The coach battery will begin to charge. And if you have your, of course, you will have your, your coach disconnect switch on. So the charge current will be felt here. And this is, gonna, this is now monitoring solely the coach battery. Eventually, the coach battery will reach 13.2. 2 volts. When it reaches 13.2 volts, there's another 15 second delay. Relay energizes and ties the chassis battery to the coach battery. Now both batteries get to enjoy that uh, charge current from either the generator or the shore power line. The chassis battery gets a great charge. It's ready to be taken on the road again the next time you need to start the vehicle. And this remains latched again uh, as long as the voltage is above 13.2 volts. That's it. That's all I have left. I can't talk anymore. Um, let's troubleshoot. Okay, so for the troubleshooting phase of this video, uh, again, I, we're all connected here to the power supplies. We're ready to go. Um, we are now going to make sure that we have uh, one or both uh, 
disconnect switches turned on or disconnect solenoids engaged. So to do that, I'm going to take the camera over here. To do that, I have a set of probes here. I'm going to plug the probe into the common ground and I'm going to pick 12 volts from this side. Now this probe has will have 12 volts on it once I get this turned on. So I'm going to turn this on, make sure that I'm set for approximately 12 volts, and I am. And I'm going to come over here, and let's just make sure of that, because now we have 12 volts. We should have 12 volts here as well. So let's take our meter. Hopefully you can see that. Sometimes glare becomes a problem. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to chassis ground. I'm going to measure here. I have 11.3 volts here on the chassis battery connection. I have 11.3 volts here on the coach battery connection. It almost makes me think that these are connected together, but uh, again, remember we have our power supply set for tracking, so the, the voltage will be the same out of the power supply. Okay. Um, at this point, I'm going to take my test leads. These are the 12 volt test leads that I set up uh, connected to the power supply. So this red wire, this red wire has 12 volts. This black wire is ground. And I'm going to go across pins on here that uh, are going to simulate turning on the coach battery and turning on the chassis battery. Let's pull our schematic back. I want to connect the chassis battery. So here's the battery, uh, or here's the, uh, the solenoid. So I'm going to follow these two wires back, and they go to 7 and 8, uh, respectively. Now from reading that I've done, if you put 12 volts on pin 8 and ground on pin 7, you will engage the disconnect. If you reverse it, you will disengage the disconnect. So positive will go on 8. The way this is laid out, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, ground on pin 7. Let's listen. Okay, nothing happened. That means that we're probably still engaged. To test that, I'm going to reverse the polarity. I'm going to put ground on 8, 12 volts on 7. Okay, there it is. The battery has just been disconnected. This is the chassis battery, and we can prove that. I'm going to pick a ground point, which is right here on this screw, and I'm going to go down here to where this says uh, chassis battery disconnect, chassis, chassis BD. I'm going to put my meter up here so that you can see it. I have zero volts there. Okay. So now, like I said, I want to engage the chassis disconnect, so I'm going to put ground on pin 7, 12 volts on pin 8. You heard the click. Let's test it to see if that did the trick. Pick up my ground over here on this screw. Go to the chassis battery disconnect lug right here. There it is. We have 11.8. 27 volts. So the chassis battery is engaged. By the way, you can also see if the coach battery is engaged by just coming down here and we can see that it is too, but it doesn't need to be. Only one or the other needs to be engaged for this interconnect driver uh, to work. All right. So now that we have that done, what we want to test is whether or not these two uh, power supply connections will uh, will be shorted together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate driving down the road. Again, we can pick up that same 12 volts from the chassis. Um, right, if we follow the chassis battery connection through the contactor, which we know now is closed, we can come down over here. And we find out that it is connected now to the manufacturer's chassis ignition relay terminal. Um, so that happens to be uh, right here. So I'm going to connect my meter red lead to that. The 
this is my red lead and I'm going to connect my meter ground lead over to here and we should see our 11.3 volts. All right, so now that we're monitoring the chassis battery, I'm going to start turning the chassis battery voltage slowly upward, pretending to be driving down the road. So our voltage continues to climb, climb, and we're going to look for that, look for what happens at 13.2 volts. Let's see what happens right about there. We have to give that 15 second delay a chance to take place. There. What you just heard was the interconnect relay energizing. So now both power supplies or both batteries should be shorted together from terminal to terminal. So if I do a battery check, we're going to see that it is. But the problem with this test is that since I have the power supply running uh, in parallel mode, of course we're going to see voltage at both of them. So in order to make that happen, I'm going to disconnect the coach battery connection here and make sure that it doesn't short on anything, just like I just did. Okay, It's painted surface, so we lucked out. All right, I'm going to go to ground and I'm going to go to the chassis battery lug. And guess what? We see our applied voltage, 13.2 volts. I'm going to go now to the coach battery lug. Guess what? We see nothing. We should have 13.2 volts there because we know we heard that solenoid engage. This is the problem. My battery was, my chassis battery was not able to connect to my coach battery. Even though I heard the clunk of that interconnect relay, it's lying to me. There's no voltage there. So this is not working properly. I've discovered my problem. What is the problem? The problem is the interconnect relay. It must have an oxidized layer of junk on the contacts. It's not making a connection between these two batteries. Therefore, the batteries are not uh, connecting together. So, all right, let's go further. All right, so now I'm going to show you how we get access to that, uh, that relay. I'm going to disconnect my power supply, make sure it's turned off. We'll come back to this again later once we make the fix. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is remove all the hardware from the lugs. So get all that to happen. Keep, keep your bolts in order as you remove them and your nuts in order. And also remember that on every one of these 12 volt connections, actually on every connection here, there's an insulator. There's a little plastic insulator here and there's a plastic insulator. Um, I'll show this to you better uh, once I get this, uh, this one removed over here, but there's also a plastic insulator um, on th uh, this bolt that has a shoulder insulation property that allows this bolt to be isolated from this chassis. You don't want this bolt to touch the metal chassis. So that's what these plastic parts are for. Keep track of them. You're going to need them. Don't lose them. So take all this hardware off. And I kind of went through and pre-loosened these with a wrench. They're normally not that loose. So, um, so go ahead and remove all this hardware. And I just tend to keep things in line with uh, where I took them off. So let's take this one off. Okay, so now I have all of these connections loose. And here you go, you can kind of see this plastic insulator here running on the shoulder of this uh, copper lug. So these are not, you're not able to push these through because these are connected to a, um, a, um, a rigid bus bar on the inside. Okay, the next thing we do is we move to the top here, we disconnect this red chassis wire. This just goes to a terminal lug here that's labeled chassis battery. It brings the chassis battery supply up to the top side of the board. All right, we're going to take some Phillips screws. And by the way, these are the connections these Phillips screws right here are the 
connections to the coils of the chassis and coach battery disconnect solenoids. So you could actually test your switches. If you, if you hit the disconnect switch, you can check to see if you're getting voltage on these, uh, between these, uh, or across those terminals right here. And this one would be for the coach, or yeah, for the coach battery. So what I'm saying, if you put a meter probe, ground probe here, 12 volts here, you hit the top side of your switch, you should see voltage either negative or positive, depending on how you have your polarity set. And if you hit the bottom side of your switch, the, you should see a change in the polarity, right? Then you know that you're getting voltage to your solenoid. So this would be the chassis solenoid. This would be the uh, uh, coach solenoid. All right. So we got those out. Now the next thing we need to remove are these connections here and these are actually the bus bar connections so we have three hex bolts to remove and there's also a fifth Phillips head screw over here this is the ground connection very important when you're putting this back together don't forget this screw way back on the side here you'll have issues if you don't So then this will just lift out now. Now you got to be careful because um, right behind this uh, transistor here, we have a red and a yellow terminal going to a red and yellow wire beneath here. These red and yellow, the red and yellow wire is what energizes the interconnect relay. That's what you're seeing here. This is the interconnect relay. So we're going to disconnect that. Now these wires can come off of the lugs. I have marked red and yellow on those uh, down there just so you can put them back to a factory configuration. And here's the board. Set it aside. We don't need it. Okay. Now we're left with the box around the floor. Now this is interesting here. You can flip this over. Um, I think we're ready to do that. Yep, let's just flip this over. And this will reveal four bolts from this side of the box. You can remove these. This thing's a little tricky to disassemble, um, but if you do it this way, it really kind of relieves the stress of getting things apart. Set these four bolts aside. And then we have another Phillips screw here. This Phillips screw is the ground bus bar on the underside. You'll, it'll actually come apart. I'm going to flip this back over the other way now. And before I put it down, I'm going to just put my finger on that screw so I can turn this standoff out. So this standoff goes through that screw down at the bottom that you see there. Don't lose track of this ground wire. This is important. That ground wire goes around that screw over on this side and this is the ground connection for your your RV right here. Okay, so don't lose track of that. Leave it there. Set your hardware aside. Okay, I'm going to pull that screw that I removed. That screw goes into the bottom side of this. I'm going to keep that together. Okay, so the only thing holding in this this thing in place now is that this case is around these two chassis and coach battery interconnect um, uh, terminals. So now we can just slide the cover this direction. And let's see if I can get it off of there. Just carefully manipulate it away. Set that aside. And now we're left with just this little uh, little plate at the bottom. I just keep this wire right there for reference. I don't ever want to forget it. I just leave it lay there because I'm not going to actually remove this. Chassis, disconnect, coach, disconnect, interconnect, relay. All right, so we're after the interconnect relay. Uh, so at this point, keep track of this red wire. Understand this red wire is necessary um, for reassembly, so don't lose track of that. There we 
go. So you're going to take these outer two nuts with lock washers off, keep them close. Don't lose track of these. All right, you still can't remove this because we're anchored in over here. So again, I, re I pre-loosened all of these. So you're watching me do this pretty quickly. You're going to need to spend some time loosening all this hardware up. Okay, so this actually just falls off to the side. Now, um, this red wire, just note that it's it goes on first before you put this bus bar in place. Okay, so we're going to come back to that. Okay, so now to at this point, we can go ahead and uh, remove the interconnect solenoid or interconnect relay. There are two screws down at the bottom here. You can just loosen that one. This one here, you'll have to remove. Keep that nearby. This just slides out and here you have the interconnect relay. And we can do a simple test. I'm not going to move this. I don't want to disturb that. But uh, here's the test we're going to do. I'm going to take my meter, uh, let's see if I can do this without too much trouble here. I'm going to take my meter, set it for ohms, and I'm going to measure across these terminals. Alright, I've got an open circuit there right now. I need to apply 12 volts. So I'm going to turn on my 12 volt supply and I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Okay, I'm engaging the relay, but you notice there's no conductivity through the two terminal lugs. It stays open uh, circuit or overload condition. There's no re there's there's infinite resistance. Those of you who don't might who don't know this OL means overload. We are measuring in the meg ohm range. This resistance is so high, there's no way current could flow from this contact to this contact. All right, so this is a worthless relay. Well, it just so happens I have a new one. I ordered this actually a couple of days ago, and. Uh, this is the new one. Looks just like the old one. I got this on Amazon. I'll put the link to this uh, if you guys are looking for one. I'll put that in the description so that you have it. It comes with mounting hardware, uh, which I won't need. And it comes with a specification sheet that tells you all about this device. It gives you more information than you ever thought you would want to know. Okay. Let's check this one out. Let's see if this one works any better. Remove this one. Put this one in its place. Get my meter back. Go to ohms. Put my probes across here somehow. I'll try to do this with one hand. Grab my voltage probes here. Turn on the power. Go from here. <laughs> Voila! You see that? We have 0.1 ohms. The M went away. We're now looking at a scale of ohms. So 0.1 ohms. This contactor is working well. Alright, that's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and finish the assembly of this in reverse order. You guys can quit the vid stop the video now, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the, uh, hit the bell so you can get notifications of any other videos I post on this topic. Um, or you can continue watching as I put this back together and we perform the test all over again. So let's do that. Let's put this back together. So this is going to go in here, get these lugs lined up. screw goes in place. Okay, this screw goes in place. 
Okay, we'll put this lug on, or uh, this uh, bus bar on. I'm just going to finger tighten some of this stuff right now. Don't forget to come back and tighten these things down. You don't have to be an ape, but you want these star washers to bite into the bus bar material so that you have a, a good electrical connection. Okay, so keep all this hardware. Oh, by the way, I made a mistake. Did you guys catch it? This is why I leave stuff close by because it saves me the trouble of figuring this stuff out later. What I forgot was my red wire. This red wire has to go. It has to go right here. Do not forget the red wire. I'm going to turn it this way so I don't have to bend it all up. All right. Much better. I'm just going to check this to make sure it's good and tight. Again, do not be a gorilla on these things. You don't want to break stuff, okay? No need for that. These all feel good and tight. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and put this back together. Keep, I'm going to keep my ground wire handy right there. Okay, line up the lugs over here. Make sure that these insulator washers, uh, these little shoulder washers, go through the holes. This I found to be kind of the hardest, hardest part is right down inside here. You want to make sure that uh, these make a snug fit up against the wall here. So manipulate this around until that happens. good when all these holes line up. Flip this box over. Actually, uh, again, before you do that, this would be a good time to go ahead and get this ground connection started. So take, take this piece, pull your screw out, lift up the floor of this thing, put your screw in through the bottom. You can see the screw down there at the bottom. Put your ground wire in place and then, then start threading this on. Okay, just, just like that. So now your ground wire is mounted. You've got your standoff mounted. We're ready to flip this over and just make our final tweaks on getting this thing in the right position. So, as you can see here now, we can see the shoulders of the plastic insulators is protruding through the box, so you know you're good there. The holes for the bolts line up squarely, so we're ready to start putting those back in so we can speed through this process. While you're here, <clears throat> go ahead and securely tighten that ground lug screw from this side while you're at it. <clears throat> All right, and then, oops, the wrong size, get these tight. Okay, this is all done. We're done on the bottom side. Flip it back over. Now we begin our work here of reassembly. Okay, so I'm going to take this this 12 volt switched lug and run it through to the left side. And you can see again why this is considered switched. As soon as you switch your chassis power disconnect on, the battery at this bus bar, the battery voltage here passes through 
this latching solenoid is presented to this particular bus bar. This bus bar is attached to the circuit board. It's also attached to this red wire, which switches the 12 volts out here to the, to the switched contact. Okay, that's in place. This goes, I'm going to set that aside. It's going to go back to the top side. Um, we need our ground wire to run through here again. You can run it any way you want through here. Now, while I have this here, just to make sure this doesn't get lost, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of this back on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the ground wire bolt on, just finger tight for right now. And you know what, actually while we're in there we might as well go ahead and get it done right because we're going to have to put a backup wrench um, on the head of that. So let's do that. Let me get, get that set up. Put a backup wrench on here. Don't be a, an ape. There's star washers here. Those will keep, just get it tight. You don't want to break these insulators. All right, so I've got the plastic insulator and then a star washer and a nut. Okay, so this is secure. We won't have to go back in here again. Just make sure everything's tight before you start sealing this up. Okay. So, we're ready now for the circuit board. Let me grab the circuit board. Here's the circuit board. We'll start by securing the red and the yellow wires on the interconnect relay. Like that. These nuts with the star washers. Just secure these two wires in place. I think this is a uh, 3 8 Don't be an ape. These have locking washers on them. Don't, you don't want to damage this $35 relay so do not be an ape all right now we're ready to finish installing the circuit board this house uh, supply by the way i remember that this circuit breaker is here when you go to disconnect and reconnect or uh, reconnect your coach battery or your chassis battery i think it's your coach battery there's a possibility that this circuit breaker this is just a circuit breaker uh will trip and you're going to think, man, what the heck's wrong? You know, the whole battery control center is terrible, it is wrong, is bad, it's defective. Well, there's a little push button on the back side of this over here. Just push that in to reset this breaker. It's a resettable circuit breaker. It's a 50 amp breaker. Supplies power to your ignition relay. Okay, make sure things aren't interfering. Okay, so we've got to get this in place. Just make sure that this is riding behind these terminals um, and is able to make it into the hole there. You don't want that to get in your way. Line up your holes. And we'll loosely install the Phillips screws. Do not forget this screw. It will drive you nuts if you do. This is what supplies ground to the circuit board. Okay, so with that in place, again, I should have just left that loose so I can get these nuts in place. Be careful too as you're working around these fuses here. These little spade fuses can pop out real easily. So make sure when you're done that you check that these are all seated in squarely. All right, you don't want to have problems with these when you get it installed inside the RV because it's really hard to get access to some of these fuses on the end here um, when you're you've got this system installed. Okay, all screws are in. I'm going to go ahead and securely. Tighten all hardware here now. Those are the three bolts. I'm going to get the five Phillips head screws secured. All right, with all that in place, we are done there. Reconnect the chassis battery 
supply here. All right, so over here, okay, make sure that your insulator shoulder is showing through. Go ahead and put plastic washer on and a locking nut. We won't tighten that just yet. Um, all right, the bottom one, same thing. Okay, those are all tight. All right, let's do a test. Bring our wires around over here. We're gonna hook chassis battery up here. Okay, we're gonna hook coach battery here. And we're going to take our ground over to here. All righty. We're not going to be using that or that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this power supply on. We have 12 volts over there uh, to find out if the chassis disconnect is engaged. We're going to go to volts. Did you hear that pop? That was that uh, time delay. All right, so I'm going to go to my ground connection here and I'm going to check the chassis battery disconnect here. We have 13.2 volts. All right, let's drive this on down to, um, let's drive this voltage down to 12.2 six volts or less. Did you hear that little pop? That was the interconnect relay disengaging because we, we dipped down below 12.2 volts. So the batteries are disconnected at this point. So let's uh, let's make sure of that. We'll go ahead and disconnect the coach battery and let's do a voltage check from ground. There's our chassis voltage. What do we see on the coach battery? Zero. They're disconnected. I'm going to go ahead and leave the coach battery disconnected at this point. Uh, we're going to use the chassis battery voltage alone to see if uh, the circuit will engage the transfer or the uh, interconnect relay. Then we should see 12 volts appear here. So let's just put this probe in the circuit. Okay, so we are now looking at uh, less than a volt there. I'm going to run this voltage up. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to see, isn't it? I'm going to run this voltage up to about 13.2. Okay, here we go. 15 seconds. Watch for voltage. Fifteen second delay, we now have 13.45 volts both on the coach battery connection and over here on the chassis battery. Okay. Be careful too when you're making measurements with these meters. Make sure that you're penetrating any kind of surface oxidation on the hardware because that'll present a resistance to the probe and you may think you're seeing no voltage and really it's because you're not really making contact electrically. So always make sure you have good solid connections through any kind of oxidation layer that might be on your hardware. All right, this, is a, this assembly is complete. The fix is complete. All right, my uh, other, <laughs> my other uh, battery died in my other phone, so I, or uh, camera. So I'm picking up my other camera. Um, as I was saying, if you have any questions, comments, uh, corrections that you want to make to anything I may have said, put them in the comments below. I'd love to read your comments. Um, I hope this was helpful to somebody. It helped me because um, it saved me a lot of money, 35 bucks plus shipping for that uh, solenoid uh, or relay, whatever you want to call that. 
Um, the black box, the, the uh, RV Custom Products BCC is going back into the camper, fully functional. All right, folks, talk to you later. Guys, be kind to one another. One of the biggest gifts you can give to the world is kindness. Give it. We all have it in us. We all have plenty. Find somebody you don't like. Find somebody you don't know. You know, uh, you, you're not wanting anything in return. You're wanting to give something. You're not expecting anything in return. Don't even expect a thank you. Just the act of giving of yourself. Buy somebody's lunch while, while they're standing behind you in lunch. Offer to pay the cashier for their meal. Uh, when you go to the coffee shop, there's somebody standing behind you in line. Pay for their coffee. Don't even ask any questions. Don't say you're doing it. Just tell the cashier. And it, it's a lot of fun, actually. And in that way, we do um, make an impression on the world. We will win the world for kindness. See you, folks. Love you all. Bye now. Get you some.